And we want to look at the uh, emerging theme going into 2020 for politicians and business leaders, uh, capitalism versus socialism. All week this week on Fox Business, we are taking a closer look at this debate. And this morning, we lay the groundwork explaining what a social system really looks like. Joining the conversation this morning, the Wall Street Journal's assistant editorial page editor, James Freeman, and PwC partner, Mitch Rochelle, Jackie DeAngelis, breaking it down for us first, though. Jackie, good morning. Great to see you guys. Yeah, you too. So this is a conversation that's going to be had on the network all week, and it's something we've been talking about. The way I look at it is like this. Ten years ago, if you said we were going to have a socialist candidate on the platform, people would have looked at you like you were literally absolutely crazy. Now it's a serious part of the conversation and it's gaining momentum in terms of the dialogue. Steve Perlstein, Washington Post business columnist, said this in his book. Uh, his book is called Can, America, uh, Can uh, America's Capitalism Survive? A decade ago, a decade ago, ago quote, 80 percent of Americans agreed with the statement that a free market economy is the best system. Today, it's 60 percent lower than in China. One recent poll found that only 42 percent of millennials supported capitalism. In another, a majority of millennials said they'd actually rather live in a socialist country than a capitalist one. I mean, that's really astounding when you think about it. And you turn back and say, do people really understand what it is that they're talking about here, the differences? Let's actually review them uh, for the people watching at home. So capitalism versus socialism, private ownership versus government ownership, individual goals versus the collective goals, right? High competition, low competition, individual wealth versus wealth shared by all. I think one of the best examples is healthcare in this country, it's sort of the closest that we've even come to having the conversation, implementing the reforms. People actually didn't get what they wanted. They ended up paying more. They ended up not being able to see the doctors that they were seeing previously. Uh, it had a tax on small business in terms of their cost rising as well. So if you continue to so you know to sort of change the system to implement these reforms, the question is you can distribute the, the wealth that we have now, but can you keep the engine going um, to further push the ball forward, further take care of everybody in the American system. And remember, we have a big population. We are one of the wealthiest countries in the world for the people that we support. But at the same time, you have to keep that going. And, and those are the themes that we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about innovation. We're going to talk about the kind of developments that come out of this country, the, the, the work that the corporations here are doing because they're incentivized to do it. Um, and really, you know, Lay it out so that the people that are on the side of the, the socialist system or do want to see that kind of reform really understand what it is they're getting into. It's an extreme case, but Venezuela is a good example. Yeah, it's a great analysis, Jackie. Really, really well done. And, you know, right now you're seeing some capitalists who made all their money in the capitalist free enterprise system uh, writing essays and, 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 and remarks about how capitalism needs to change, James. Yeah. So even those capitalists who enriched themselves over a, a, a 20, 30 year period are now questioning the very system that got them there. Yeah, it's uh, disturbing. I think part of it is that there, there's been uh, a lot of uh, misinformation, uh, one uh, on the inequality front. Uh, uh, a lot of these measurements that say it's so horrible, it's growing, it's worse than it's ever been, uh, they don't consider after-tax, after-government benefit levels of income, which is really what matters. Once uh, the government is through redistributing wealth, uh, what is the income level? And you look at those measures, they maybe haven't changed all that much over time. But look, inequality is part of what makes capitalism work. If there's not a reward for doing more, for innovating, for creating the new invention, you don't get those inventions. You mentioned Venezuela. I mean, how many great inventions have come out of Venezuela in the last decade? By the way, I would even say, None. I would even point that to Europe. How many yeah. great innovations have we seen coming out of Europe? What Italian company, what Spanish company can you name that, that are in the top, you know, 100 or 50 in terms of innovators in, in technology and in biotech, medicine? You know, we also should consider, Mitch, is the fact that capitalism and the free enterprise system, particularly in the last couple of years as economic growth has picked up, has lifted so many out of poverty. Yeah, no question about it. When you put capital at risk, no matter how small it is, uh, you create wealth, perhaps, if you're successful. But if you are successful, one of the things you create is jobs. And I think the thing that's lost in a lot of this debate is that putting capital at risk is the thing that creates jobs and creates wealth, not just for the person who put the capital at risk, but for those who are employed. And income inequality is something that's clearly debated, but I'm with James. You have to look at it on an after-tax basis. And if we make the marginal tax rate 90 percent, we're going to create more income inequality, not less. But I also think it's important to really explain what socialism is, because a lot of the Democratic hopefuls, while they say, I'm not a socialist, 
they are actually endorsing or supporting socialist programs. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to look at the glasses half full, I think it's nice that they feel compelled to call it Medicare for all because they know that uh, still, I think, socialized medicine or single-payer health care or no-choice health care is not going to be appealing to people. So even though they're, they get rid of Medicare, they, they feel like that brand has got to be used instead of saying a full-on uh, socialist system. But the thing that nobody talks about is if we were to nationalize uh, insurance and nationalize the health care system, what about all the jobs that are displaced as a result? Yep. What about all the private insurers who are now laying people off? What do they become, government employees? Because 180 million Americans get their insurance from private insurance companies. Right. Now, this is an important topic.